Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. I am Evangelist Cynthia Lyons. Praise God. Welcome to Tenderhearted Ministries where we lift up. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Happy Palm Sunday. That's right. Today is Palm Sunday and we glorify God. Today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about Palm Sunday. What is Palm Sunday? And uh, so we want to talk about that a little bit today. I ask that you would just hit the share button. If you would just hit that share button, because we always offer Christ to anyone that wants to be in relationship with him. We offer Christ here. So if you know anyone that does not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins, please share this message. Just hit the share button. Like and hit the share button. Amen. Amen. So the word today, the message today will come from Matthew. Please get your Bibles. Amen. Get your Bibles. And uh, let's go to Matthew 25. It's 1 through 11. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing. We're going to talk about it. But it's talking about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Amen. This is High Holy Week. It's Holy Week for us. This started the commencement of Jesus' way to the cross. He was headed to the cross here, and that's why we call it Palm Sunday. Let's go before the throne of grace first. Amen? Praise God. Father, we come before you lifting up your holy and righteous name. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up today, oh God. We give you glory and we give you praise. Now, Father, we ask that you prepare our hearts and you prepare our minds to hear from you today. Oh God, we pray for revelation knowledge into your word. Speak, Lord, as only you can. We pray for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, Father, that they would surrender today and say, Say, what must I do to be saved? Father God, we lift up each and every person that will listen today. Oh God, to your word, Father God, I pray a special blessing over their households, Father God, that you would watch over them, that you would keep them, that you would lead them, and that you would guide them, and that you would get the glory from their lives. We thank you right now in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. I pray amen, 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 and bless the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Like I said, the word is going to come from Matthew 21 verses 1 through 11. Now, I'm not going to read uh, those verses. I ask that you would read this in your leisure because this week is so special for us, for us as believers. This started Jesus' complete journey. This whole week, he was on his way to the cross. In the first uh, verse of 21, talked about uh, talks about Jesus, um, how he was uh, surrounded, well, basically where he was at. He was at Bethsage, um, unto the Mount of Olives with his disciples. Also, it was a multitude of people with him. If you look in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all talk about this account. And uh, some have more details than other. for, for others. For instance, I like this one because I was looking at the fact that how Jesus sent two of his disciples. He sent two of his disciples to get a cult, an ass in a cult. And Jesus sent them, I'm looking at verse two. He said, go unto the village over, over against you and straightway ye shall find an ass tied in a cult with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say unto you, ye shall say the Lord have need of them and straightway he will send them. Amen. The word of God is already blessed. And I like the fact that Jesus uh, selected two disciples. They don't say what who the disciples was. I don't know exactly who they were, but it was two that Jesus sent on a mission. 
How many times have the Lord spoke to you and told you to do something and you didn't do it? Jesus told them what to do. He told them exactly where, where the asses would be tied in the cult. He told them what to say. They did exactly that and brought it back. Who knew that over 2,000 years later, we would still be talking about what these two people did? You know, a lot of times God gives us an assignment, something to do, but we're too busy wondering about what somebody's going to say, how we're going to do it. See, they didn't worry about any of that. They took Jesus at his word. They did what he said and exactly what he told them. That's exactly what they found. And they said what Jesus said. They didn't add anything to it. They didn't take anything away. And when they took that back to Jesus, when they took them back to Jesus, they put cloaks on them. Amen. They put, put their cloaks there. Jesus sat. Can you imagine? Jesus used them in such a mighty way. I never hear anyone talk too much about these two disciples that went out and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And when they came back, that is the very, very donkey, the ass that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on in the commencement of going to the cross. Hallelujah for our victory. Hallelujah for your victory and for my victory. He used these two guys. Now, keep in mind, Jesus had not too long before that performed a miracle, which was raising Lazarus from the grave. So there were multitudes of people around him. There were a lot of people around him. They were all talking. Now, Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. Amen. He was going up to Jerusalem for Passover. Passover was such a big event. People came from all around to go to Passover. Everyone was talking about Jesus coming. They met him crying, Hosanna. Let's look down. Okay, the prophecy, let's back up. The prophecy that was fulfilled in verse number five, it came from, uh, the prophecy was uh, Hosanna. No, 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 that was Zechariah. Zechariah nine and nine. This is the prophecy. Tell ye, daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. Look, Jesus did, Jesus was so specific. He fulfilled prophecy. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing at all times, even to the cross. Amen. Jesus knew what he was doing. He made sure that he fulfilled prophecy. Now, many thought that the Messiah was going to come on a stallion or riding in a chariot. No, Jesus came lowly. He came lowly, but he was still king. This is one time in the Bible that you will see. Uh, it was a, not many times that Jesus allowed worship and praise. He didn't allow it too often. But this time he knew where he was going. He knew his assignment. He knew that the assignment was almost complete. Jesus allowed worship. He allowed praise. Okay, if you look down to verse number nine, it says the multitudes went before, before, and they followed crying, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So a lot of people think Hosanna means hallelujah. No, it means save. Hosanna means save. They were still praising him, but they were saying save. They thought that he, they knew and acknowledged him as being Messiah and they were saying save, but they wanted to be saved from the Roman people from the Roman empire. They wanted to be restored back and, and they didn't understand that he was a king. All right. He was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. But by Thursday with all that, with the palm branches, they were waving the palm branches. That meant victory. Only time you wave palm branches, when they waved them back in biblical days, that meant victory and that meant peace. 
those two things. They were waving them in victory. They were waving for the king. They acknowledged him as king. They only thought that he was going to do, he was the king of, you know, that would restore them and restore their nation, restore them back. And they were looking at the things around them. But Jesus came for all of us. All of us. He came through 40 and two generations, honey. He came for us to deliver us and take the sting out of death. He came to give us eternal life. He came to give us victory in every area of our life. Not what they were looking for. So by Thursday, they were hollering, crucify him. Yeah. They were hollering, crucify him. Those same people that threw cloaks on the ground so that the donkey could walk over them. They threw branches and waving and saying everything. They were having such a good time praising God, but they didn't know. They wasn't praising him for who he really was. They didn't really know who he really was until Jesus, hallelujah, until Jesus was, he died on the cross. Until he rose again, they didn't really know who he was. Even his disciples didn't fully understand who Jesus was until he was glorified. Hallelujah. So that's Palm Sunday. It, was, it began Jesus' journey to the cross. So this week is considered Holy Week. Holy Week. And I would admonish you because I'm doing it and I would admonish you to draw closer to God, to pick up the word of God. I would say read a chapter a day. Why don't you get the, uh, the Bible and uh, start in John, read John, start in John and read a chapter a day. Pray at least three times a day and I'm going to ask you to fast. Yes. If you want to draw closer to God, if you want to get closer to him, try to sacrifice something. You know, you may be taking medications and I'm not telling you not to take your medications. If you have to take your medicine with food, sacrifice something else. Why don't you sacrifice dessert? Why don't you sacrifice coffee? Why don't you sacrifice something that you like to do? Remember, it's not a sacrifice if, if, if you're not going to miss it. So you have to sacrifice something when you fast. And you have to sacrifice that exact same uh, thing all days. Seven days. From this Sunday to next Sunday, put something on the offer, altar of God. Put something on on the altar, sacrifice it, push back from the plate. If you like rice, fast from rice. If you like bread, fast from bread. You know, something that you are sacrificing, pick up your word and pray. And I guarantee you that you're going to feel a move of God in your life like never before. When you acknowledge that this is Holy Week, and that we are sacrificing because we want to draw closer to God. We want a real relationship with him. Do that and you'll see a difference in your walk with God this week. I'm telling you this week. Email me. Well, inbox me. Inbox me. Um, go to my web page at tenderheartedministries.net. Tenderheartedministries.net. And uh, send me a message. Let me know what God did in your life. Because I know if you do what I'm telling you to do, you're going to see a difference in your life. You're going to see a difference in your relationship with God. Now, for those of you who don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, uh, pray with me. Let's invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior today. Just as you are right where you are, you can accept Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. All you have to do is believe that Jesus died for your sins and he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. Believe that God raised him from the dead. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's it. That's the only requirement. It's free. You can't buy it. Hey, man, praise God. Repeat after me. Father God, I confess that I am a sinner. I ask that you save me. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead and that Jesus died on the cross for all my sins and that he rose again on the third day. 
I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, and I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, welcome. Hallelujah to the body of Christ. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Nothing big. You don't have to go through some kind of ritual. All you have to do is confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you shall be saved. Amen. Praise God. Now, please visit my website. Please hit share. Share this video so that someone can accept Jesus right where they are. Someone could be saved today and God would have used you to do it. Amen. Praise God. Meet me next week. Easter Sunday. Meet me Easter Sunday at 9 a.m. God bless you. I love you and you have a blessed and safe week. I pray and plead the blood of Jesus over you in your household. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.